Page 26, Barker Roll. At the top of this page, they are introducing first and second endings. They give you the symbols for it. It's aligned with the numbers, okay? You see the first and second endings in this piece at the end of the first line there on page 26. The next to the last measure is the first ending. The last measure is the second ending. Now, an ending can be any number of measures long. There's no rule on that. You could have an ending last for 8, 16 measures, whatever. And there can be more endings than two. And they can be, combine them. You could have first and second endings together. It'd be a one comma two instead of a one. And then you could have other endings, three and whatever, after that and so forth. And just to make it more interesting, you will notice a repeat sign at the end of the first ending, there at the first line. That's not a rule. That doesn't have to have a repeat sign. It could, in some pieces, they, it goes on. You'd skip the second ending and keep playing. Sooner or later, you have to come back in order to get to the second ending, but it doesn't have to have a repeat sign right there at the first ending. I need to talk about a few things here. I'm going to start with the right hand. Uh, we have these, this is a nice 6-8, it's a rocking thing. rocking. I would encourage you if you can think about experiment a little bit with different fingers on these repeated notes right at the beginning. Now you want to play the natural accents and you want to feel the natural accents. You want to feel you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. You're going to sort of feel it in two so feel it. If you can play different fingers on those repeated notes good. Starting with the second measure, it's, it's a little easier. You, you play the last note in the first measure with second finger. Then if I do the first note in the second measure with third finger, and then the quarter note G with third finger, next measure, start it with third finger, is what I'm trying to get at. Second line, you're here. I recommend a 3-2-3-2 three, two, three, two going up. Then when you get to the top, do a 3-4. And then a 2-3-2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three, two, three coming down. So we have this repeated, it's, it's called a sequence, when you have a repeated set of notes going up or down. And we like to try and use the same fingering for each set of repeats here. I could keep going and I just keep using two and three for as long as it goes. Then when I come down I just reverse and go three two three two like here they're doing in the third measure. And I could keep going down. That's just sort of a standard thing. You'll see it a lot in music. And here I'm suggesting you, that you use that fingering. So, to reiterate, second line. You're starting second finger, then a 3-2, three, 3-2. Two, three, two. Now it's a 3-4, because I'm going to turn around and go down. Now 2-3, two, 2-3, three, two, three, two, three. Last line on page 26, 2, 3, 2. Notice the C natural. Okay. The last note on page 26 going into page 27, I recommend a thumb on that B. And then when you get to page 27, second finger. Page 27, second line, I recommend a 2, 4, 3, 2, back to that same fingering we did in the first line on page 26. Third line down on page 27 in the last measure. Bring the thumb under to get the D. 
I'm not changing anything here, I'm just pointing it out to you. And then on the fourth line down, second measure, watch the fingering there. Just do what they're showing you. Last line on page 27, it's a 1 5. Now it's 2 3. And then the same fingering here that I suggested for the first line on page 26. Then for the last measure, I suggest a 1 3. Play the F sharp a little louder than the D. Okay. In the left hand, it's you have this rocking thing going. Remember the C sharps. All Fs and Cs are sharped unless they have a natural. Second line, you're starting out fine. You gotta go down to the A against the E G. And then the last measure of the third or the second line is five. Just go up to page 27. At the top, 5, 3, 1, and then, and then last measure of the first line, get your thumb on the A. And the last note at the bottom of page 27, the left hand, it says a D here, but it's got an 8 and a little line under it. That means played an octave lower. So instead of here, you're going up here. Okay, for three counts. Remember, it is in six-eight time. And the pedal and the hands all come up at the same time at the end. I want to encourage you here, as far as the pedaling goes, look at the bottom of page 26. In the second measure where they're telling you to pedal it, I would encourage you to lift the pedal up when you play the D in that third measure. So the pedal is not down when you play these eighth notes in the right hand. Okay, We want to hear these eighth notes cleanly. If you leave the pedal down, it'll smear them. Yeah. Same thing at the top of page 27. Lift the D, lift the pedal up when you play the E so it's up. So we can hear the eighth notes in the right hand clearly. That's really the trick there. Same thing in the third line down. Lift the pedal up immediately when you play the first note in the left hand in the second measure. So those eighth notes are without pedal. We don't want pedal on those. And then the last measure, the same thing. Lift it up when you play the left hand chord so the eighth notes are clean. Next line, same thing. Uh, you get the idea. So, I'm going to give us four counts, but I'm counting dotted quarter notes. So it's like a one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. I'm going to give us a full six count, so we're going to play this really, really, really slow. You can speed it up on your own. One, two, three, four, ready, go.
five, six, off.